the art and the uh, contraption of warfare has changed, uh, especially in modern times. And I bring your attention to what's uh, termed DDoS. It is the Distributed uh, Denial of Service. In times past, we knew who each other's enemies were. We knew by uh, uniform that they wore. We knew by geography. We knew it by, in some instances, uh, their physical characteristics. And so therefore that made uh, warfare engagement, uh, I don't wanna say easier, but you were able to identify who you were fighting. Things have changed, especially since terrorism has uh, come front and center on the uh, public eye. At that point, we no longer had uniforms to look at. We no longer had uh, physical characteristics to look at. In essence, uh, terrorism, you're fighting ideals, which can make it almost more uh, dangerous, if you will. We had the uh, attacks on the World Trade Center on two separate times. And there's been lots of attacks around the world. You have the London bombing. You've got uh, that mall bombing in, in Africa. We no longer understand who we're fighting. When you are fighting against an ideal, any type of ideal, it is a magnet for people. It draws people in. It draws people from other geographies, from other nations. It draws people of all ages, not just the age of 16 or 18 where you can enter some type of military service. It brings in all sexes, everything. And so that is a very dangerous Thing. Now, DDoS is the Distributed uh, Denial of Service. And in my opinion, it is the new uh, turning point to a new kind of warfare. We have become a very digital uh, species. We have uh, harnessed and continue to be efficient at harnessing energy. We now use energy for uh, information control and information flow. And it is also used to produce the internet, which in turn we use to move or mobilize our economy, our business and services. And it's also a, a uh, means of um, advocating ideals as well. In free elections, if you will, uh, almost all candidates these days put up some kind of a website or a Facebook page and uh, ask for information. It's, it's a dialogue. But for DDoS, what happens in the architecture of this is that somebody produces and uses malware, an infection, if you will. And that is sent out to uh, computers, just like a cancer works, like a virus, that's what it is. Send out to, to uh, computers. And those computers are then 
in a nutshell, turned into clothing uh, designed to infect other computers and can spread. Now, the it's the infection itself that's interesting because uh, what it does, it it turns a computer into a door knocker. And what it does is knock on targeted doors. For instance, if you've got a... If a group of people have an idea and they are now dead set against a certain... Oh, let's see, see. So a, a nation's economy, okay? You're going to attack the banking system. And so if there is a targeted attack with malware against a certain... Uh, banking institution, you can cause a DDoS by creating an infection that will spread to other computers, thus making those computers turn around and con constantly knock on the doors of that banking institution via their website. And if you know uh, much about uh, web uh, design and how the internet works, you can actually easily overlay a website, causing all kinds of things to happen. Um, it can run very extremely slow. You can also bring down, crash that, that website. And so it, it is very dangerous um, and expensive thing to repair. But that that is the new, that's the new attack. That's the new warfare, <clears throat> and that's the new army that is rising from the uh, innovations that we have learned over the past two hundred years about electricity. And so that's how our enemies are targeting the United States. And it, it, it's going both ways. It happens all over. There's factions in the United States that are attacking other countries' uh, websites. But it, it's, a, it's just a, a dangerous turn because it is affecting and will continue to affect in a exponentially increasing way our liberties and freedoms as a people. We enjoy the thought that the internet is the free exchange of information and ideas. At the same time, regardless of how important our information is that we deem in, uh, important, there will always be uh, scores out there that see your ideas as dangerous. And it doesn't matter what idea it is. If you hold on to an idea that 2 plus 2 is 4, someone out there is saying that's blasphemy. And they will try to bring you down. And so it, it really does not matter what kind of a website you have. Basically, you know, uh, whatever will do the most damage, they will aim for, like banking institutions. Um, election results, they will target websites that point to or accuse uh, certain ideals that they seem paramount. And, uh, you know, just the whole idea of, of DDoS is uh, disturbing to me because there is really no other way around this. We are becoming a more uh, computer-dependent uh, civilization. And as we do that, we are taking the battlefield from, from the desert, from the jungle, from even the streets, and we're now bringing it to the Internet. That is where the new field is. And so, you know, I can't stress enough how important 
much it is for um, companies and nations, if you will, to increase their funding and their focus on various forms of uh, protection from hacking protection. And, you know, it's interesting. The flow of electricity almost takes no uh, space at all, no width. You know, there, there's really no end to it. And as we develop uh, computer chips and circuit ways in smaller and smaller uh, dimensions, we increasingly come to learn how uh, endless the possibilities are to electricity and our computing power. And so, you know, when I talk about increasing the funding for firewalls and protection that is a that will a, be a never ending uh, initiative never ending battle because there will always be <coughs> a way to get into a site it is the flow of information which is run by fiber optic and uh, electricity and so therefore uh there will always be hackers out there to develop ways to bring down a site, to bring down uh, your freedoms and your services. And so it's, it must be the um, main platform of any business to constantly keep your uh, protection up to date and state of the art. <clears throat> but and you see that more and more as time goes on because we have increasing numbers of extremists in the world of people with little ideas that they magnify in their own uh, demented mind as being uh, godlike or all powerful or I'm the chosen one type of thing. And so they will actually set out to um, buy off or pay for legions of computer literate people, hackers, young kids, whatever, to infect, target not only individuals, but institutions, businesses, to bring down their their site to be moralized and to hinder their growing efforts. You know, it was disturbing. I remember on 9-11, it was disturbing to me to walk outside of the building I was in at the time. And <clears throat> I'm actually in Iowa. But to walk out and to look up in the air and see absolutely no airplane exhaust trails in the sky. <clears throat> absolutely none. And that was because the uh, president had ordered a no-fly. And I believe that was for several days. But it, it, it had a profound impact on me because it, 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 it uh, made us vulnerable. And sometimes it takes something physical like that um, to have us realize just how vulnerable we are. And we were fighting an ideal. There were people fighting our ideal. And so I would just challenge everyone to take great care in the new form of, of warfare that we are taking on that has now gone beyond uniforms and physical characteristics, but has now taken on the form of ideals. And we can't even identify anymore people with these ideals because they are now on the internet. So those are my thoughts for today.